Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, chemical symbols. And this is actually something which looks quite difficult and quite intimidating the first few times you see it. But it's really, it's going to be a piece of cake, I promise you. Let me show you. So here we've got H2O. This was probably the first chemical formula you ever learned, way, way before you were in high school and you were doing your GCSEs. And this is water, as I'm sure you know. But what does this formula mean? Well, it means that a water molecule, and this is the formula for an individual water molecule, it means that that is made of two H's, so that two relates directly to the letter in front of it. H in this case, I'm sure you remember, is hydrogen. And there's just one oxygen. Now, chemists save themselves a little bit of time by not bothering to write that number one in. If you've just got the letter by itself, then there's just one of that atom. So this formula just tells you how many of each type of atom you've got in that particular molecule. So the number after the letter tells you how many of that letter you've got. Okay, it only relates to the letter directly in front of it. So we've got two hydrogens, oxygen without a number there. That just means that there's one oxygen. And this relates to the structure of a water molecule. The structure of a water molecule is kind of like this. There is one oxygen atom in the middle And sticking off either side of this, a little bit like the ears of a mouse, who I am probably not allowed to name for copyright reasons, there are a couple of hydrogen atoms. Okay, so H2 and the O. Let's look at another one. This is methane. It's the type of gas you get from the gas supply. It's the type of gas that you get out of the gas taps at school. And it's one of the most common molecules you're likely to see. I want you to look at it for five seconds and then think about how many of each type of atom there is. And by this point, you really should recognize what that C and what that H mean. Which type of atom do they correspond to in your periodic table? So, five seconds, starting now, go. Did you get it? Well, let's see. The first thing that should have leapt out at you right away is this number four there. Now remember, the numbers in one of these formulas only applies to the letter right in front of it, or the symbol right in front of it. It does not apply to this one. So we've just got four of these H's. And you should know by now, really, that that H is for hydrogen. So whatever this is, we've got four hydrogens in it. Then we need to look at this next letter here, the C. And again, this is one you ought to recognise by now. It's carbon. We don't have a number here at all. That doesn't mean we don't have any, because if there wasn't any, then we wouldn't bother writing the carbon at all. If there isn't a number there, that just means that there's one. Okay, so one carbon, four hydrogens. Did you get it right? Let's have a quick look at a few more examples. And all I'd like you to do is in your head, work out how many carbons, how many hydrogens, and how many oxygens there are in each of these molecules. Ready? Here's the first one. C6H12O6. This is the formula for glucose. I'll give you five seconds to work this out, although you probably won't need that long. Off you go. So hopefully that wasn't too difficult for you. C6 means six carbons, H12 means 12 hydrogens, and O6 means six oxygens. Let's try another. C2H4 is the formula for ethene, the simplest of all the alkene molecules. And again, I'm going to give you just five seconds to work this one out. Off you go. Did you manage? Here's the answer. C2 means two carbons, H4 means four hydrogens, and there are no oxygens mentioned in here anywhere at all, so there are zero oxygens. Now I'd hope by this point you're starting to feel fairly confident about this. So let's try one that's a little bit more difficult. See if you can spot why it's tricky and take care with this one. This is as complicated as it's going to get for you. C2H5OH is the formula for ethanol. This is a type of alcohol. You will be talking about it at other points during your GCSE chemistry. Five seconds again, off you go. Time's up. So, did you spot why C2H5OH can be tricky? Let's go through it one step at a time. Now, I would hope that with this two right after the C, pretty much everyone got that there are two carbons. That's the easy part. 
You could probably look at this oxygen here and go, well, there isn't a number after that oxygen. That means there's just one of them. But the hydrogens, that's where it gets tricky because we've got two lots of them. We've got five hydrogens here and we've got just one extra hydrogen stuck off the end here. So actually it is five plus one hydrogens, which equals six hydrogens in total. That's the correct answer. In your ethanol molecule, two carbons, one oxygen, and five plus that one, giving you a total of six hydrogens. So when it comes to a chemical formula, to get that C in your GCSE, this is as complicated as it gets. You are not going to deal with anything more complex than these molecules which you're looking at right now. I hope that's clarified things a little bit for you, and I'm gonna leave you with one last bit of really good news. And that is that the AQA specification currently says, if you're doing foundation tier, you don't have to balance equations. Your teacher may have talked it through with you a little bit just to broaden your knowledge, but for foundation tier students, it is quite clear and quite explicit in that specification that comes from AQA, and it says foundation tier students do not need to balance equations. So that's something you do not need to worry about. I hope that's brought a smile to your face. Good luck in your GCSEs, everyone. And remember, if this video was useful to you, like it, share it, and you can subscribe for more all below.